If you're planning a new build or you're planning a remodel for your house or you're an existing house that you feel like needs some upgrades, what are the priorities? What should you spend your money on? What are the things that constitute a well-built house and things that you will actually uh, both enjoy and benefit from. Now, we're not talking necessarily about aesthetics today. I'm not talking about countertops or appliances or things like that. I'm talking about what you can't see, what's behind your walls, your systems. On the Build Show today, we're gonna take a deep dive into energy use, comfort, durability, and priorities for a well-built house. Let's get going. All right, guys, and when we think about our houses, our houses are really just an environmental separator. They're gonna separate us in the indoors from the outdoors. And what does the outdoors have? It's got heat and cold. It's got pollen and mold spores and things the air, in the air that we wanna separate from our houses. It's also got water. We don't wanna get our houses wet, right? So that environmental separator, those walls and roofs and that outer shell for our house, it's not something we think about very often. But as we're planning a house, a new build, or we're planning our remodel, thinking about our envelope is critical to ultimate comfort and durability and longevity and energy efficiency on our houses. Now, when I say the word energy efficiency, people are typically thinking, oh, we're going to talk about insulation. But in fact, insulation is actually a little bit lower on the priority list than you might initially think. Now there's really four things that a house needs to separate when we think about separating the indoors from the outside. We're gonna need to separate water, right? When it rains, we don't want that rain coming into our house. Or if the water comes up from the ground, if it's flooding or raining, we wanna make sure our basements are dry, right? So water is number one, and that's really a top priority. Number two is air. We don't want air leaking in. If I left a window open on my house 24-7, 365, I'd have a really hard time keeping my house comfortable when it's 105 in Texas or when it's five degrees out in Minnesota. We need to control the airflow in our houses. Number three, we need to control vapor flow, right? If it's really humid outside, we don't want that humidity coming in. Conversely, in the wintertime, if you're in the north and it's humid in your house, you don't want that humidity to end up in your walls in the wintertime where it might meet a cold condensing surface. So vapor control is important. And lastly, thermal control. I wanna maintain a temperature in the house. I'm gonna insulate my walls to slow down those BTUs coming from the outside or moving to the outside, whatever the case may be. So it's really just four things, water, air, vapor, and thermal. Now when we think about our walls, I, I did a little research trying to think about where is actually that energy moving as we think about thermal, and where am I spending money to condition my indoor environment. I found a couple of pie charts that are pretty interesting. Now pie charts, uh, when we think about energy loss, they're gonna vary depending on the house, right? Every house is very different. In fact, I was looking at uh, some manual J's that my friends at Positive Energy have done for me over the years on different houses. And one cool thing that those guys do is they give me a chart of loss or gain for that specific house in my specific climate but I wanna talk more broadly here. I found a great pie chart uh, online for houses in cold climates and where in the wintertime they're losing their heat, meaning there's, there's flow of heat from inside this house that's air conditioned or heated in this case to let's say 68 degrees to the outdoors where it could be 10 degrees outside. Now these pie charts, you can find them if you just Google this, they're gonna vary quite a bit. But for the most part, you're gonna find that a huge part of the pie chart, in fact, the biggest part of the pie chart is air leakage. And I've seen some that are showing as low as 25% and some that are showing as high as 50%. This particular chart is saying that on this house in the north, air leakage accounts for 30% of the loss, which means if I've got a 100,000 BTU furnace, 30,000 BTUs are going straight out my door from air leakage losses. That's around windows and doors. That's around drywall um, cuts in my ceiling, if that's my air barrier. That's all those places that air is gonna leak through our house. 
The other energy loss in northern houses is through basements. Often basements, which are underground and coupled to the earth, are much colder. And so we're losing heat out of those basements. Another thing we're losing heat through is windows. Now, if you're in the north, that's 20% of your heat loss in the wintertime. That's a big deal. If you saw my double pane versus triple pane window video not too long ago, that's really where those triple pane windows come into effect, or maybe even more efficient than that windows, 20% of the loss. Walls and attics, 25%. So as we think strictly about just insulation, that's only really about 25% of your loss in the wintertime in a cold climate. That's not a massive number. Now certainly reducing that will help, but the point is there's other things we need to do as well. We need to think about our windows, we need to think about our basements, and we really need to get a control of our air. Now, if you look at my other videos where I'm talking about air leakage, everybody in the world says, houses need to breathe. You see that all over the comments. But in fact, no, that is not true. We need to breathe. Our houses need to be very, very airtight. Think about our bodies. God designed our bodies as an incredible system. There's blood pumping through my body. Oxygen is brought in through this dedicated fresh air port called my mouth that goes into my lungs. The oxygen filters throughout my body. Is my body designed to have air come in here or here or here or here? No. If we have a cut or a tear in those places, bad things happen. Our houses need to be the same way. We have the technology to do this. We do this all the time in our cars, right? If I was in my truck going down the highway at 70 miles an hour and my window's down just that much, I'm gonna notice it right away. My air conditioner is probably not gonna keep up if it's hot outside. All those pollens and all those other things that are in the outdoor air are gonna leak right into my indoor environment. No, I need to have my windows up. My car is a very airtight shell. I can bring in the fresh air through my dedicated air conditioning system. I can send it through a nice big fat filter, which happens to be located in my glove box that I change once a year. It's no big deal. We need fresh air on our terms, not just when the wind is blowing. Now let's look at a pie chart though, which is a summertime pie chart. You can also get this from your manual J for one of my houses, but I actually got this from my friend, Energy Vanguard. Allison Bales is an engineer, and he had this on his blog, which I really liked, um, showing a particular house in Atlanta in a, um, a hotter climate, in the summertime, a house that he did some study on. And this is interesting. Now this is, remember, this is gains, meaning heat gained in the summertime in a house in the south because we're cooling dominated like I am here in Austin, Texas. Now this part, this pie chart's interesting. Infiltration's still a big deal, almost 20%, but the gains from the duct work was huge, and that's because the ducts in this house are outside the condition envelope, meaning they're in the attic. And those ducts typically that are in hot attics that are unconditioned, very little insulation like R6 or R8, and the attics are very hot. So that's a huge source of additional gains. Internal gains in the south is also a big deal. That's your TV, your computer, all these things that make heat during the course of the day. Ceilings and walls, about 30% of the heat load. Windows, about 10%, and floors, about 10%. Interesting to see where those gains come from. Now, this is gonna change, like I said, for every house and every environment. But what can we learn from these pie charts, and how can we apply that to building a new house, remodeling a house, or even trying to upgrade our current houses? I think what we're really learning here, or what I'm seeing here, is that air sealing is a really, really big deal. Getting our ducts into the air conditioned space if you're, in, if you're in the south is a big deal. Upgrading our windows from standard windows to better windows, that can make a really big difference. And really focusing on products in our houses that are gonna get us a more airtight enclosure. Now, if you've watched my videos, you've seen that in all my houses, I do a blower door test. That's where I take the front door out, I put this device in, this big red box, basically with a fan, and I'm pressurizing my house as almost as if, as if I'm blowing up a balloon. If you can picture that balloon blowing up, that's exactly what a blower door test does. 
And that balloon, which is our house's envelope, has all these pin pricks of air. And what we're trying to do is minimize all those pin pricks of air in the balloon so the balloon will actually hold that air. Think about a hot air balloon. When, when the, the guy in the basket up there hits the heat, the heat goes up in the balloon. The balloon captures it and rises. If there is a bunch of rips and tears in that hot air balloon, that balloon wouldn't go anywhere. That's what we need for our house is a very airtight enclosure so then we can heat and cool it properly, we can filter the air properly, and we can bring fresh air in on our terms. Now, insulation is vitally important, and putting in the right places is important, right? The pie chart from the north, basements often are way under insulated. Only in the last probably two or three or four years have I even seen builders in the north starting to insulate their slabs in their basement or properly insulating their walls on the exterior in the basement. But dealing with those air leaks, huge priority. Dealing with good insulation and more insulation, the time to do it is when you build new and when you remodel. Later on down the road, it's really hard to add insulation once the house has moved on in construction. Spend the time and the effort to do it right and spend the money on good insulation and thick insulation while you're actually building the house. And what that's gonna yield also is a smaller heating and cooling system. Older houses, houses that don't care to uh, think about air sealing and efficiency, they end up putting giant systems in to heat and cool those houses when really these houses that are very efficient, like passive houses, like what I'm building, I just need a small engine to heat and cool my house. And that small engine is going to run just a little bit all the time. It's kind of like having a little four cylinder engine compared to a big V8 or V10 engine. Those V10 engines, tons of power, they also guzzle the gas. Your little four cylinder that just runs a little bit, that's what we're looking for. Guys, hopefully this was interesting for you and you learned something here. This is a little bit high level. I was talking a little bit of building science and a little bit of theory. If you want more information on this, I want to recommend a podcast. A couple of my friends who are on Build Show Network, Steve Basic and Jake Bruton, just did a great podcast on this exact topic. I'm going to link to it down in the description below. But this whole idea of understanding the science behind a better built house, that's what my channel's all about, guys. For the last dozen years that I've been on YouTube and I'm making these videos, I'm thinking about how to build a better house. What are the systems, components, products, ways that I can build a house that's more durable, more comfortable, more efficient, that's gonna be mold-free, healthy, indoor air quality, that's gonna be a house that's gonna really last and endure, and that's why I make these videos. Comment below if you've got any uh, questions on this. I'll try to get back to as many of you as possible. And follow along on Instagram, too, if you're not currently following my Instagram feed. It's Reisinger Build. I've been posting a bunch of pictures from my passive house under construction. There's so much to talk about on this topic. But, guys, thanks for watching The Build Show. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. New videos every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.